Good afternoon. Section uh, 11.A. Power series. So as you remember, series are infinite sums of numbers. So today we consider a special type of series that look like this. Uh, Cn are numbers or constants, which are called the coefficient, coefficients. of the power series. And x is a variable, OK? So we have c0 plus c1x plus c2x squared, and so on, OK? So first of all, you notice that this is a function of x. Uh, and in fact, a partial sums are polynomials. Right? Because they contain different uh, powers of x. Question? Uh, so is the c there the same in each member of the power series, or is it different? So uh, each uh, coefficient, uh, c0, c1, c2, can be a different number. So in fact, we are given an infinite number of uh, those coefficients. Okay. Um, so we can think of this as a function of x, of x, OK? Um, and of course, uh, in general, it's, it's not really a polynomial because it, it does have an infinite number uh, of terms. Um, so there is one, uh, the first example. Uh, comes back to the question just asked, what happens if all cn were the same? Okay, If all numbers cn were equal to 1, what would we have? We would have a series that looks like x to the n. Uh, and uh, this actually reminds us of the geometric uh, series, right? This is, um, is a geometric series with r given by x. So your regular geometric series uh, has some number here. For instance, it, it has an, uh, a coefficient uh, a and the number r. This one uh, has a variable x. So for any value of x, this is a geometric series. And in fact, we can say when it converges. It converges if the absolute value of x is less than 1, right? And diverges if the absolute value of x is greater or equal than 1. Um, so, but uh, this is only a particular um, type of power series. The simplest one, when uh, all the coefficients cn are different. In, uh, in, in general, there can be all different. Um, and here's a, an even more general, a more general, general form of a power series. So again, we have coefficients cn. And instead of x to the n, we have differences x minus, minus a to the power of n. So. Um, so it's called the power series centered at A. A is a constant. Okay. Um, now, the, the, the main question that we're going to study today, of course, is the convergence of these guys. Okay. And the very important tool is going to be uh, the ratio test. So let's look at the first example. Um, does the series uh, 
no, uh, this is the wrong question. Okay, so for what values of n uh, of x, for what values of x the series given by the following uh, n factorial x to the n convergent, converges. Oh, one remark going back. Uh, if you noticed, we start our summation with n equals 0, whereas before, when we looked at other types of series, we usually started with 1. This is a convention. When people talk about power series, uh, we start with n. Uh, this way, um, you can see that the first term is actually a constant. And then we have the first power of x second and so on. Okay, th so it, in general, this polynomial will contain a constant term. We allow it to uh, be one of the terms. So now we look at this uh, power series. You can see that it's a power series because it's in that form. It's centered around 0. Okay? And the coefficients cn, as you can see, are given by n factorial. So they're all different. Okay? So um, because uh, this contains a factorial, we'll use the, uh, use the um, ratio test. So we're going to look at a n plus a n plus 1 over a n. So when we do that, we momentarily forget that x is not a constant but a variable. We just fix it uh, to be some value okay, and investigate convergence. So in this case, a n is simply given by n factorial x to the n. So we have n plus 1 factorial x n plus 1 divided by n factorial x to the n. Uh, the absolute value goes, uh, and we have n plus 1, and we have x. Uh, and what is the limit of this expression as n goes to infinity? Let's write it like this. What does it tend to when uh, uh, for any fixed value of x uh, when n goes to infinity? So there are actually two cases. Okay, if x is not equal to zero, for instance, it's equal to five, or for instance, it's equal to zero point zero zero one, what is the limit here? We have a constant times n plus one, n goes to infinity. So the limit is, of course, infinity, right? If x is equal to 0, then this term becomes simply 0, okay? And the limit is 0. So we conclude uh, by uh, the ratio test that if x is any number but 0, the power series diverges by the ratio test. If x is equal to 0, the power series converges. So in this interesting example, the convergence is only observed for one single value of x, x equals 0. For any other non-zero value of x, the series diverge. Questions? OK, so uh, next example. For what x uh, the following thing converges? You can see that this is a power series centered at 3, x equals 3. Okay? And uh, we again use the ratio test with 
a n given by uh, simply the general term of this power series x minus 3 minus 3 over uh, to, to the power of n over n. So a n plus 1 divided by a n uh, is x minus 3 n plus 1 n plus 1 and we have x minus 3 to the n over n. Okay? So some things will cancel. Um, for example, I have x minus 3 to the power n plus 1 divided by the same thing to the power n. So I have x minus 3 remaining, and I have n over n plus 1. And I'm going to divide this whole thing by uh, n. So I have x minus 3, 1 plus 1 over n. Okay. So what I'm interested in uh, when applying the ratio test is to calculate the limit of this quantity as n goes to infinity. So the limit as n goes to infinity of this guy is equal to this the limit of this expression. What is the limit? And very good. So this goes to 0. So I simply have x minus 3. So now we're, we have to remember the conditions of uh, the ratio test. Uh, do you have a question? Oh, no. Question? Why did you multiply uh, n? Oh, uh, I divided the numerator and denominator by n to bring it to this form. And it's easier than to argue about the convergence, right? the limit. I, do, I mul multiplied. One step before that. One step before that. So here. So here we have the following. x minus 3 to the n. Or we can write it like this. Yeah, that's fine. And we have x minus 3. Uh, n, n plus 1, x minus 3 to the n. Agree? I uh, decompose this into x minus 3 uh, to the power of n uh, times another one. These two cancel completely. And what I have left is n is positive, n plus 1 is positive. So I have to take the absolute value of this times n, n plus 1. Okay. More questions? Uh, OK. So. For ratio, so we call this L when we talk about the ratio test. If uh, L is less than 1, we have convergence. L greater than 1, we have divergence. And L equals 1, uh, we actually don't know. Okay? So let's talk about uh, the cases that we do know. If x minus 3 absolute value is less than 1, then the power series Converges, right? Um, so what does this mean in terms of x? You remember what it means uh, in, in absolute value. It's the <coughs> distance of x uh, from the number 3. Okay. So if we draw this, if this is 3, um, x that is closer to 3 than 1 belongs to this. So it's this interval. Okay. So this is the same as to say that uh, x is less than 2 and uh, greater than 2 and less than 4. Okay. So converges. If this guy is greater than 1, then we have divergence. Okay. Uh, the only uh, remaining question is, what happens if x minus 3 is equal to 1? Right? This is where the uh, ratio test is powerless. 
we don't know. We have to uh, kind of check it in a different way. So, and this is usually pretty easy. So we're going to do it uh, by hand. So when x minus 3 is equal to 1, what does it mean? It's, it means that x is either equal to 2 or x equals 4. These are these two points. This one and this one, right? The borders of this interval. So let's set first check x equals um, uh, 2, 4. Let's first check x equals 4. Uh, so we have the series of 4 minus 3, sorry, to the n over n. That simplifies very much because it's simply 1 over n. What does this do? That diverges because this is a harmonic series. Diverges. Harmonic series. OK. The second uh, interesting case is when x is equal to 2. In this case, we have 2 minus 3 to the power of n over n. OK. So what's 2 minus 3? That's, uh, of course, minus 1 over n. What does this series do? Do you remember this? This is the, the sister of the harmonic series, but it's alternating. This one converges. Right? So we can write down that here at 4, we have divergence. And here we have convergence. So what's the conclusion? The series converges for x belonging to an asymmetric interval from 2 to 4, not inclusive. And it, and it diverges otherwise. Okay. And this is going to be our usual routine. We use uh, the uh, ratio test or sometimes the root test uh, and then we check a couple of numbers by hand because those don't belong they, they um, give you one uh, the next example which I like very much is the following uh, it's called the function is called j naught of x and it looks ugly um, like this 2 to n, n factorial squared from 0 to infinity. It's called the Bessel function. Of order, so first, first, uh, that's a j. First, we investigate its properties, and then I'll tell you about it, OK? Uh, so we're going to use the ratio test to find the values of x for which this uh, function converges. <coughs> OK. So an plus 1 over an. So we have minus 1 to n plus 1, x 2 n plus 1, 2, 2. So everywhere instead of n, I put n plus 1 factorial squared, OK, divided by minus 1 to the n. <coughs> x to n, 2 to n, n factorial squared. So because I'm interested in the absolute value, I can get rid of minus 1s. Okay. 
I have x to n plus 2 divided by x to n, so I have x squared. Okay. Uh, I have this, what's this guy? It's n plus 1 uh, n factorial times n plus 1 squared, which is n factorial squared times n plus 1 squared. n factorial cancels, so I have n plus 1 squared. Uh, fine. And I have 2 um, 2n, and I have 2 to n plus 2, so I have 4. No, I don't need the absolute value, actually. Sorry, this is a square. Okay, so this is uh, after a lot of simplifications. This is what I get. Question? Yeah, could you explain factorial? Um, so on the bottom, I have n plus 1 factorial, right? Yeah. Squared the whole thing. So to n plus 1, can you see here? n plus 1 factorial is the same as n factorial times the next term, n plus 1. Right? Yeah. For instance, 5 factorial is equal to 4 factorial times 5. We have to multiply by the next number. Okay. And then I square that, and then this guy cancels. All right, thank you. You're welcome. More? More questions? So uh, what I need to know is the limit as n goes to infinity of this expression. So is this difficult to calculate? No. When n goes to infinity, what happens? Goes to 0. And it doesn't matter what x does. Okay, For any x, this guy goes to 0 as a function of n, as n goes to infinity. So this is actually very good. It means that the series converges for any x, okay? for any real x. Uh, so when we go back here, this is the definition of this function. You can see it's, it's written as a function of x. This is its name because it's very common in science. It describes many things. Uh, it, it looks like this, but the series is convergent. So actually, this expression makes sense, and it's equal to a finite number for any value of x. So uh, we can plot this as a function of x. And let me plot it for you. So you can, for instance, stick any number of x, for instance, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 1, 2, 3, in your computer, and calculate a finite number of terms, like 100, and then you'll get a very good idea of what this thing does. Um, and for positive x, it looks like this. It looks like a wave of a decaying amplitude. Okay, and here it's symmetric. So this is the uh, vessel function. Now, I, I told you that it's, very, it's a very important function. So actually, to visualize it, imagine um, a rope hanging from a ceiling, okay? A massive, heavy rope, a long one, okay? And uh, I push it, and what, what does it start doing? It starts doing this, right? Uh, no, that's not good. This is fixed, right? So it, it kind of, you, you can envisage what it is. Now, look at this function. Lie on your side, OK? And take, take a piece of this function, like, for instance, from here to here. So this is exactly the shape uh, of this rope uh, that you will see uh, that it outlines as, as it dances around. Okay, you can calculate it, you can prove it, you can solve an equation that describe, describes the hanging rope that does it, and the shape is exactly described by this function, only you know, vertically uh, uh, situated. Okay? Another um, uh, application of this function, if you um, play a drum, okay? no, if you play violin, you have a string, okay? and if you cre create a note, this string is going to vibrate, which means that it's fixed at this end, and it's going to do this. Right? And if you know any uh, string instruments, you know about harmonics. You can put your finger here, and then it's going to do this. Oh, sorry. It's going to do this. They're going to be, it's going to look like this and vi vibrate like this. Or there's going to be the next harmonic that looks like this, and so on. Uh, so these are called harmonics of the sound. A two-dimensional generalization of a violin string is a drum. Okay, it's a, it's a circular membrane 
when you push it, it oscillates in the vertical direction. And the shape is given by the Bessel function. Okay? The shape of different harmonics of that is given by the Bessel function. So if you come to my PDE class, I'll tell you more about it in a couple of years. But for now, <laughs> we, we only know about the convergence of this beautiful function. Okay? And the convergence, uh, it converges for any uh, value of x. So let me uh, give you a log of what we have done. Okay? So we have looked at several examples. First, it was x to the n, uh, and convergence um, was for x less than 1. The next example was n factorial x to the n, and the radius uh, con converges on only for x equals 0, only. Okay, the next example was x minus 3 to the n over n, and it converged for um, x between 2 and 4. And finally, we have the Bessel function. to n, 2 to n, n factorial squared. And that guy converged for uh, any x, so from minus infinity to infinity. So um, all these results can be generalized. They, they are specific examples of one theorem, which uh, we are now going to formulate. So, theorem for a given power series, it looks like this, Cn x minus a to the n, there are only three possibilities. So either it can be series only converges for x given by a, the center, or the series converges for all x or number three, the series converges if the distance between x and a is less than r. Uh, and diverges if the distance between a, x, and the center is greater than r for some number r uh, positive. Okay. So r, this value r, is called the radius of convergence. And here we can say that r is infinity, right? Because you can think of the whole, you know, number line uh, as the distance between x and a being anything from zero to infinity. So this is r equals infinity. And here, this formula is set r equals zero. So only at the center does it converge, and nowhere else. Okay. Uh, so let us. Look at our examples that we already uh, covered. Here we can write the value of the radius of convergence. 
for the first one, uh, the uh, geometric series. The radius of convergence is 1. Okay. The second example is characterized by zero radius of convergence. It only converges at the center. So you can see that this, this uh, power series is centered at 0. Uh, you know, th this is the most general expression. You have x minus a to the n. If we just have x to the n, that's like a equals 0. Okay. So it only converges at a equals 0, uh, at x equals 0. Question? Yeah. So the, uh, l let me show you an example. So uh, uh, when I'm given a power series like this, it's characterized by uh, a single value a, which is called the center. Okay, for instance, zero. Okay, and uh, this theorem tells you that there can be only three cases: either the series converges when x exactly is equal to this guy, or everywhere, or you can draw an interval. So this distance is r around this guy. And inside this interval, the series converges. Outside, it diverges. And actually, at the moment, it's not clear what happens at the borders. So the radius of convergence is uh, the size uh, of this interval. Question? So then for the third one, the radius of convergence is going to be 1? Absolutely. Very good. So here. Uh, you, you go from 2 to <coughs> 4. The center was 3, as you remember. So r is 1, right? And for the last one, r is infinity. So very interestingly, this exhausts all the possible cases. For example, we could not have the following picture. The uh, series converges here. And maybe at some point here, and maybe starting from here everywhere else. That's impossible. Okay, the uh, set of x for which it converges can only look like this, or it's equal to a, or it's infinite. That's it. Okay, N nothing interesting like this can happen, and that's good because it, it makes it easier to study. Will there ever be a power series that diverges for all values of x, or will it always converge at some point? So uh, the power series. Um, of this kind has to converge when x is exactly equal to a, because you can see that in this case, all the terms are equal to 0. So no matter what, uh, it, it will co converge at x equals a. And this is the minimal case. OK. Yeah, very good question. Question? Yes? Uh, how do you know that the radius of convergence for the first one is 1? Oh, this was our first example. And we compared this, or in fact identified this with a geometric series with r equals x. This is a geometric uh, series. Uh, and it will converge when r is less than 1 in, in absolute value. So that's, that's this. So how do you find radius of r equals 1? So uh, you can see that this particular series is centered around 0. Okay, And it converges. Uh, when the absolute value of x is between minus 1 and 1, which m makes r 1. Okay, more questions? OK. So um, so the, let, let me actually draw the general picture. So for any power series, we're going to have a. We're going to have a minus r here and a plus r here. So everywhere inside here, we have convergence. Everywhere here is divergence. And these two points uh, can either uh, be convergent or divergent. Okay. More questions? OK. So um, let's look at a couple of examples. So one uh, thing that I forgot to comment on is like this. So when we define the power series, um, 
Okay, uh, the enumeration usually starts at zero, although not always. Some of the examples uh, did start with one. Uh, so here, let's uh, look at the first ter uh, at the very first term. So we have c zero, <coughs> x minus a to the power of zero, right? Plus c one. Um, okay, so I want to attract your attention to this term. So when x is not equal to a, uh, this guy is 1, right? It's some number to, to the power 1, so this is equal to c0. What, what happens to x, well, when x equals a? You have 0 to the power of 0, which is like an indeterminate form almost. So here, when, when we uh, use this notation to denote the power series, we adopt the convention that even for x equals a, so uh, 0 to the 0 is 1. So as I wrote here, this term is equal to c naught uh, even for x equals a. Although when you said x equals a, it looks like this. We adopt the notation that it's equal to 1. Okay. So now uh, to our examples. So we have a sum from 0 to infinity minus 3 to the n x to the n square root of n plus 1. Okay, So we're going to investigate its uh, convergence. We're going to find the radius of convergence and uh, the set for which uh, the series converged. So the question is find the radius of convergence and the interval of, of convergence. What's the difference? Well, the radius of convergence tells me uh, this interval, but it, it's not clear what the ends do. So it could converge, for instance, uh, between a, a minus r and a plus r inclusive, or it could be a minus r, a plus r like this, or a minus r, a plus r inclusive, or even a minus r, a plus r, right? So we have four possibilities depending on whether this point and this point uh, is convergent. Okay? So that is why uh, the question is formulated like this. We need to find the radius of convergence and the interval of convergence, not exactly the same thing. So uh, we are going to use uh, the ratio test with a n given by minus 3 to the n x to the n squared of n plus 1. So a n plus 1 over a n. I'm actually going to ignore the minus sign here because we only need the absolute value. So I have 3 n plus 1 x n plus 1 square root of n plus 2. And I have 3 to the n x to the n square root of n plus 1. So, um, 3n plus 1 is 3 to the n times 3. 3 to the n cancels. So I have 3. x is here. Uh, and I have n plus 1 over n plus 2, like this. So what is the limit as n goes to infinity of 3x times square root of n plus 1, n plus 2, right? This is what I need to calculate. 
uh, for the uh, ratio test. So this is the limit. So basically, you can do that or just see that the, the limit uh, of the square root is 1. So I have 3x. Okay, And oh, sorry. Uh, when this is less than 1, uh, well, let's, let's try it like this. So what does it tell me? If 3x is less than 1, then the series converges. Uh, so I have to extract the information uh, about uh, the radius. So I'm going to divide by 3. The absolute value of x is less than 1 third, right? Uh, how can I rewrite this? I can just draw it, right? The center is at 0. So I have 0. So if the absolute value is between minus 1 third and plus 1 third, we have convergence. What does it mean? That r, the radius of convergence, is 1 third. Okay, so I answered the first question, uh, which is just to find the radius of, of convergence. So at this stage, I know that inside this interval it converges, outside it diverges, and I don't know yet what happens at the ends. Okay? So I answered the first question, the radius of convergence. Questions? So to check the ends, I, I need to check them by hand. So let's take x uh, equals minus 1 third. Okay. After this, I have to rewrite my series. Once I fix x to be a, a number, this uh, stops being a power series, and it just becomes a series. Okay? It's, it's, it doesn't depend on x anymore. So what do I have? From 0 to infinity, minus 3 to the n times x to the n, minus 3 to the n times minus 1 third to the n divided by n plus 1. Okay? Does it simplify? What's minus 3 to the n divided by minus 1 third to the n? 1. Okay? So in fact, it's n plus 1. So there are two ways to go about this. You can either do some uh, test to, to compare it with the 1 over square root of n series. Or if we write down the terms, uh, when, x equals, uh, when n equals 0, the first term is 1. The second term, when n equals 1, I have 1 over square root of 2, square root of 3, and so on. Right? So in fact, this is equal to starting from 1 of this. Okay? And this is a p-series with p equals 1 half less than 1. So it diverges. Okay? So the value of minus 1 third diverges. How about the other one? The second interesting case is x equals 1 third. So I have minus 3 to the n times 1 third to the n, n plus 1. So this is actually an alternating series. And this is an excellent candidate to uh, use the alternating series test. The terms b n decay for sure, and they go to 0. So this whole thing converges by the alternating series test. So this guy converges. So I'm going to write down the answer to the second question.
the interval of convergence is, so which one is included uh, from minus one third not including to one third inclusive. Okay, so this is an asymmetric interval of convergence here. Questions? Okay, uh, so uh, there, there is one more example. This is the last example. So let's, uh, let's do this. Um, again, the same question. We have n x plus 2 to the n, 3, n plus 1. Okay, so uh, applying the ratio test, we have n plus 1, x plus 2, n plus 1, 3, n plus 2, divided by n, x plus 2 to the n, 3, n plus 1. Okay. And this guy uh, simplifies very much. Uh, we have one uh, uh, three at the numerator, uh, denominator. We have x plus 2 at the numerator. And we have uh, n plus 1 over n. What's the limit of this guy as n goes to infinity? You can see that this combination of n's goes to 1. So we just have x plus 2 over 3. OK, so we can say that if x plus 2 over 3 is less than 1, the thing converges. So I need to rewrite this in terms of r, the radius of convergence. So I'm going to multiply by 3. x plus 2 is less than 3. OK, and I'm going to draw it. OK, the distance between x and minus 2 has to be less than 3. So I have minus 5, this is 3. And I have minus 1 plus 3 is 1. OK, so the radius of convergence of this guy is 3. Can you see this? OK, so when I have an expression like this, it's only one step away from expressing it in terms of r. I just have to manipulate it to make it look like the distance from x uh, between x and some number is less than something. So this actually is r. Okay. Now we have to check the two ends. Do it very quickly. We still have a couple of minutes. So the, the questionable points are minus 5 and 1. So x is minus 5. What do I get? n minus 3 to the n, 3 n plus 1. So I can rewrite it like this. So it's a funny looking uh, series whose terms alternate sign and uh, uh, they are multiples of n. So you can see that the, the absolute value of uh, the terms actually grows as n goes to infinity. And for sure, there is no, it, it, they don't decay to 0. Okay, so the, by, the, by divergence test, test, this series diverges. Okay. The second and last uh, point is x equals 1. So we have to rewrite our series. We have uh, 3 um, n times 3 to the n divided by 3 n plus 1. Okay. This is because x plus 2, I, I take x equals 1, so I have 3 to the n. That's this one. So again, this gives me something that looks like this. And obviously, each term, a, n, they, they grow. They, they don't go to 0. Again, diverges by the divergence 
test. So the interval interval of convergence is x belonging to from minus 5 to 1, not including the ends, because on both ends we concluded that it diverges. Thank you very much. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. Thank you.